Have you ever asked yourself if you're a good Christian? How do you know? What can you do if you're not? Now in this video, I'm going to explore what Peter the Apostle said to a group of believers who wanted to become better Christians. I'm Pastor Mike, and this channel is called Scripture That Makes a Difference, because I believe Scripture has made a difference in my life, and that it can make a difference in yours as well. So in each video on this channel, we aim to show how each passage makes a difference today. This is your first time here. You can learn more about this channel in the description below. And if you find you like this kind of content, just click the subscribe button. This weekend, I plan to speak on the parable of the sower. Only one ground in this parable was productive. Why is this? And what does the Bible say we need to do to be fruitful? Seeing that only one of the four kinds of grounds is fruitful in Jesus' parable of the sower, it might lead us to ask, what can we do to be more fruitful? As you might expect, the Bible tells us. In 2 Peter 1, verses 5 through 8, Peter says, For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I've always heard these verses called the addition passage because the King James Version has the word add in place of the word supplement. Both translations imply that we can contribute to our fruitfulness in a systematic fashion. It always starts with faith, the Greek word pistis, and refers to being so convinced of something that you trust. And I actually prefer the translation trust to faith because the modern tendency is to understand faith as a leap in the dark or a conviction that an absurdity is true. To our faith, we're encouraged to add virtue. Or you might say today, character. Good character traits such as those discussed in these verses. To our character, we add knowledge, the kind that can only be obtained over time and with experience. After knowledge, we add self-control, which describes one who has lordship over himself. Steadfastness is next, not simple stubbornness, but a cheerful, hopeful endurance. After steadfastness, we add godliness. Another English word is piety. The Greek word breaks down as well worship, but it was used by the Greeks to describe someone who so lived with the awareness of God and his presence that it affected every aspect of life, turning all of life into worship. After godliness, we add brotherly affection. I think the ESV has selected this term to translate this word in, to differentiate it from the next. Usually the word Philadelphia is translated brotherly love, but affection works just as well. It describes the relationship that we have with other church members. The final word or characteristic that we add is the crowning glory of all believers, agape, usually translated love but it's not really that neatly understood. Chip Ingram has offered the best definition that I've ever heard. For Chip, agape is to give to another what they need the most when they deserve it the least at great personal expense. Total selflessness. But what's the reason for doing this? Why are we encouraged to add these things? As it happens, the answer is in the context. In 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4, Peter says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world 
because of sinful desires. In these verses, he's promised us all that we need to be like him, like Jesus. He's done this for his own glory, and he's promised that someday we'll partake in the divine nature. That's right, we'll be just like Jesus. In these verses, he's promised us all that we need to be like him, like Jesus. He's done this for his own glory and has promised that someday we, we will partake in the divine nature. That's right, we will be like Jesus. Because of all of this, we'll become fruitful in the knowledge of Jesus. So if we desire to escape the effects of our sinful desires and to be fruitful instead, we can supplement our faith with these things. And we will be fruitful. And we will be effective. And that's good news. So, I'd love to hear your reaction to this. Maybe you've had some experiences that you'd like to share with me or others in the comments below. Or maybe there's something you have questions about or disagreements about. I'd love to carry on a conversation with you. Again, just type them in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for future content, please include that as well. And if you like hearing how specific messages can make a difference today, click the subscribe button and click the bell. So you'll be the first to know when I've released a new episode. And don't forget that you can help get the difference making message to others by sharing these in your favorite social media. And if you happen to live anywhere near Enid, Oklahoma, please come by and visit us. Our address is on our Facebook page, and there's a link to that below. Our services take place at 10 o'clock in the morning. And this Sunday, you can hear about six resources that are given to us to help us supplement our faith in the ways we've talked about today. And until next time, remember this. God wants you to grow, and he's promised that you will.